Yazd is the capital of Yazd province in Iran. The city is located 270 kilometers southeast of Esfahan. For the 2011 census, the population was 529,673, and it is currently the 15th largest city in Iran. Since 2017, the historical city of Yazd has been recognized as a World Heritage Site. Because of generations and adaptations to its desert surroundings, Yazd has a unique Persian architecture. It is nicknamed the City of Wind Catchers from its many examples. It is also very well known for its cisterns, underground channels, and coolers. Yazd is the driest major city in Iran, with a yearly precipitation of only 49 millimeters and a total of 23 annual days of precipitation. Yazd is also the hottest city north of the Persian Gulf Coast, with summer, with summer temperatures frequently above 40 degrees Celsius with very little humidity. Even at night, the summer temperatures are rather uncomfortable. In the winter, the days remain mild and sunny. However, the morning thin air and low cloudiness causes temperatures to sometimes fall below zero degrees Celsius. A wind tower is a traditional Persian architecture element to create natural ventilation in buildings. Wind towers come in various designs, including unidirectional, bidirectional, and multidirectional. The devices were used in ancient Egyptian architecture. Wind towers remain present in Iran and can also be found in traditional Persian-influenced architecture throughout the Middle East. Central Iran shows large diurnal temperature variation with an arid climate. Most buildings are constructed from thick ceramic with high insulation values. Towns centered on desert oases tend to be packed very closely together with high walls and ceilings, maximizing shade at the ground level. The heat of direct sunlight is minimized with small windows that face away from the sun. The wind tower's effectiveness has led to its routine use as a cooling device in Persian architecture. Many traditional water reservoirs or cisterns are built with wind towers that are capable of storing water at near freezing temperatures during summer months. The evaporative cooling effect is strongest in the driest climates such as the Iranian plateau leading to the omnipresent use of wind towers in drier areas such as Yazd, Kerman, and Kashan. A small wind tower is called a shishkan in traditional Persian architecture. Shishkans can still be seen on top of cisterns in northern cities in Iran. These seem to function more as ventilators than as temperature regulators seen in the central deserts of Iran. Wind towers tend to have one, four, or eight openings. In the city of Yazd, all wind towers are four or eight sided. The construction of a wind tower depends on the direction of airflow at the specific location. For example, if the wind tends to blow from only one side, it is built with only one downward opening. This is the style most commonly seen in Yazd. The wind towers are short and have a single opening. To keep buildings free of dust and sand blown in from the desert, wind towers were built facing away from the wind. The wind tower can function in three ways, directing airflow downward using direct wind entry, directing airflow upwards using wind-assisted temperature gradient, or directing airflow upwards using a solar-assisted temperature gradient. One of the most common uses of the wind tower is to cool the inside of a dwelling. It is often used in combination with courtyards and domes as an overall ventilation and heat management strategy. It is essentially a tall cap tower with one face open at the top. This open side faces the prevailing wind, thus catching it and bringing it down the tower into the heart of the building to maintain airflow, thus cooling the building interior. It does not necessarily cool the air itself, but rather relies on the rate of airflow to provide a cooling effect. Wind towers have been employed in this manner for thousands of years. Wind towers are also used in combination with underground canals. In this method, the open side of the tower faces away from the direction of the prevailing wind. It should be noted that the tower's orientation can be adjusted by directional ports at the top. By keeping only this tower open, air is drawn upwards using the Koadana effect. 
The pressure differential on one side of the building causes air to be drawn down into the passage on the other side. The hot air is brought down into the underground tunnel and is cooled by coming into contact with the cool earth and cold water running through the tunnel. The cooled air is drawn up through the wind tower again by the Koadana effect. Overall, the cool air flows through the building, decreasing the structure's overall temperature. The effect is magnified by the water vapor from the underground tunnel. In a windless environment or a waterless house, a wind tower functions as a solar chimney. It creates a pressure gradient which allows hot air, which is less dense, to travel upwards and escape out the top. This is also compounded significantly by the diurnal cycle, trapping cool air below. The temperature in such an environment cannot drop below the lowest nightly temperature. When coupled with thick adobe that exhibits good resistance against heat transmission, the wind tower is able to chill lower level spaces and mosques and houses in the middle of the day to frigid temperatures. Directing airflow upwards using wind-assisted or solar-produced temperature gradients has gained some ground in Western architecture, and there are several commercial products using the name Wind Tower. Dolat Abad Garden, located in Yazd, central Iran, is considered a Persian architectural jewel. The garden is an authentic Iranian garden that annually attracts thousands of domestic and foreign tourists. This is is a complex built according to the original Iranian architecture style and consists of a large garden and a few buildings. Looking at the garden and the main entrance, you will see the long pool in the shade of the tall cypress trees leading to the main entrance. On the way to the mansion, there are beautiful grapes and pomegranate trees behind the cypress trees. This traditional air conditioning system of local houses around the desert in Iran is the essential element of residential structures. However, the exaggerated grand size of this wind catcher functions perfectly well. The building has a large stained glass window that can be pushed up and down to allow air in for ventilation. At the central section of the building, there is a small pool which adds some humidity to the dry air of the house in the heat of the desert in Yazd. It looks like a central open air section where you can see the windows of the upper floor and corridors leading to the exterior corners of the house. It is at these corners that you can find the staircases leading to upstairs. The most significant characteristics of the design of this building is believed to be the attempt of the architect in selecting tactful angles for providing the best views and landscape internally. This garden complex includes the southern frontispiece building, the vestibule building and the wind catcher, the summer building, the mirror hall building, and a double-spanned water cistern. The mansion inside this wall garden is a unique octagonal plan structure with colorful stained glass within sash windows panels. In addition to a long pool in front of the building, there are some small ones inside the building and a room accommodating a small pool underneath the wind tower, which is still the largest in the city. This garden is regarded as one of the sites worth visiting due to the gardening skill and landscape architecture, the irrigation method, and in the richness of architectural design. It is for this reason that it has been recorded as a historic building. This garden is among the Persian gardens that have been registered on the World Heritage List as one of the masterpieces of traditional gardens. Next, for an example of a sustainable building located in the United States, we will turn to the Visitor Center located in Zion National Park outside of Springdale, Utah. As you can see, the exterior of the building is stunning, as is the scenic background. However, there is more than just looks to this impressive structure. The Zion Visitor Center was built on a previously disturbed site and utilized outdoor exhibits to take advantage of Zion's climate, thus reducing materials needed and overall cost. Some of the most key sustainable features include vertical cooling towers, radiant ceiling panels, a tromb wall heating system, solar panels, and a specifically designed overhang to maximize daylighting and efficient account for solar heat gain throughout the various seasons. These features have resulted in energy and cost reduction to operate the facility. For 2006, this equated to 
in savings from a 74.4% reduction in energy use and a bonus of 310,000 pounds of CO2 emissions reduced. For a building with similar size, location, and service type, the strategies for the visitor center have resulted in a 64% reduction in energy use for heating, 95% energy reduction for cooling, 73% energy reduction for lighting, 43% energy reduction for plug loads, and 92% energy reduction for running fans for ventilation purposes. For the visitor center, solar panels provide 30% of the building's power and 80% of the structure is lit through natural daylight. Direct gain passive solar and daylighting come from the south facing windows above the tromp wall and the solarestory windows. For the spaces where daylighting is not possible, T8 fluorescent and HID lights are used. A computer controlled energy management system helps balance the energy loads and promote overall efficiency. The most notable features are the cooling towers, which act like a big swamp cooler. They use only a minimal horsepower pump to circulate water through pads to cool air, which then naturally sinks and spills out into the lobby. This satisfies the cooling load for the building with help from the natural ventilation. For outdoor landscaping and irrigation, outdoor shade structures are used along with native plants. Existing trees on the site were saved to provide instant shade and for aesthetic purposes. For the minimal amount of irrigation required, a historic ditch irrigation and river water system were used. Since the visitor center is in a hot, dry climate, thermal massing and a trombol wall were used for heat retention.